everyone is playing the Arcanist wrong. If I see one more Proctard Arcanist build, I think my head is going to explode. I'm going to punch a baby in the trachea. Just kidding about the baby part. No, but seriously, this is the sleeper build that I've waited so long to release. I didn't want everyone to catch wind of it until I did proper testing. And guys, this is way more broken than Oaken Soul Dragonite ever was. You can literally one shot an entire Zerg with just one single button. I'm not kidding. You're going to see here in the background multiple occasions. I did all this streaming in one take. This is like three hours worth of streaming. If you are not following me on Twitch and YouTube or have the bell notifications, please do so. I do these live streams all the time. I come out with these crazy off meta builds that just completely wreck Cyrodiil. I want to have some clips playing in the background. I did slow down some of the footage because the damage happens so fast. If you blink, you're going to miss it. You're going to see 25K, 26K damage numbers. The highest I've been able to get this tooltip and actually hit an opponent in Cyrodiil is 29934. Almost a 30,000 tick. And the best thing about this is it, it is an AOE and it cannot be blocked. There is absolutely nothing you can do about this damage except just marinate in it. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the clips and please watch until the end because i do have a lot of tips and tricks and things you need to know for this build this has been the most fun class the most fun build i have ever played to date in the elder scrolls online so without further ado let's hop into it before I start going over the build guys, there are so many different ways you can run this build. This is what works best for me and I've spent countless hours playtesting stream after stream trying to get the most damage and the most survivability while also maintaining a very easy combo to get all of your damage off. And this is what I came up with after hours and hours and days, man, just days of bashing my head against the keyboard. This is what works best for me. And if it can work for a smooth lizard brain like me, I know it can work for you. So so when it comes to the race, we are running the Imperial. We do need some old cost reduction. I will explain all the cost reduction here in a moment. We have all of our attribute points into health. We're running the Bewitched Sugar Skulls as our food. Mundus of Choice is the Lord. You can also run the Lover. And we are Vampire Stage 3. Now you will have around 3k stam recovery on this build. It is desperately needed. I will explain to you why here in just a moment. We're like 2200 mag recovery. It's going to be needed. Very first set is Deadly. So the way this build is going to play out, we are going to be using Gibbering Shield. So I'll go ahead and explain Gibbering Shield because this is what the entire build revolves around. So or excuse me, Sanctum of the Abyssal Sea is the morph we're using. So essentially you will have, so the idea is to get this tooltip as high as possible and also having the highest spell and physical penetration as we possibly can because the only way you can increase the damage on this is sets like Deadly Strike and also a Mythic Malakanth. This, this does not scale off your maximum stamina or magicka. Yes, it does scale off your health and it does not scale off your weapon and spell damage. So all of those stats are completely wasted. So with that being said, the very first set we are running deadly, we're running sharpen on this. Again, we're trying to maximize our spell and physical penetration. Again, maces because, you know, again, the passes from the dual skill line. Don't worry about the enchantments on this because we're running double dot poisons. Now we do want to get five light on this build and that leads us into our next set that we're running on our back bar exclusively, which is going to be wretched vitality. Now I do prefer an ice staff because on my front bar, I can heavy attack and get resources with stamina. And then on my back bar, I can heavy attack and get resources with my magic with an ice staff. Now we are running a defending on this. Uh, you could also run power. That's entirely up to you. We're running the escapist poison. So this is going to immobilize your targets and it's also going to give you some crowd control immunity for 4.4 seconds, which is really, really clutch when it comes to open world. So if you guys do not know what these sets do, so deadly, essentially what this set does is it's gonna give you weapon spell damage, not that important. Crit, definitely not that important for the build. Weapon and spell damage, it, while it will not really bolster the damage of our abyssal shield, it is going to bolster every other damage that we do, you know, with, with our spammable and our dots and yada yada. So this will increase the damage of our damage over time abilities as well as our channel ability by 15% which is going to apply to her bubble now wretched vitality this is a craftable set so it's really good it's going to give you a buttload of magic and stam recovery you are desperately going to need it so you'll get magic and stam recovery applying a major buff on your back bar and to you to yourself or a major debuff to your enemy and also a minor buff to yourself or a minor buff to your enemy this is the best sustained set in the entire game and it is kind of overtuned a little bit so we are desperately going to need this for our tank ability so we are crushing on our imperfect 
impervious room ward for our tank ability, so you have to have a lot of recoveries in order to spam that ward and keep up the pressure. Now, when it comes to our monster set, we are running Blood Spawn. That is very important to get as much ultimate regeneration and reduction as possible because the idea is to be able to pop your ultimates on your back bar and by the time it runs out you're almost at your next one so you only have a few seconds of downtime on your ultimates before you can pop them back to back to back to back that's what makes this build so strong because you're constantly in your ultimate and you're just unkillable literally unkillable Try to run as much maximum health as you can, so I do have a lot of healthy enchantments, some of which are tri-stat. I didn't want to override the tri-stat glyph with just a basic health glyph because I'm very frugal like that, okay? So we're running Blood Spawn. If you're not familiar with what Blood Spawn does, gives you recovery and gives you some resistances and, and you have a 6% chance. We need to take damage to generate 13 ultimates. So this is really, really strong if we're trying to get our back-to-back -back ultimates. Now we're running One Piece Trainee. We're running Gallant, Heavy Reinforced. So when it comes to all the armor weights, you can kind of mix and match these, but I would suggest running five light, one medium, one heavy, just to maximize your amount of spell and physical penetration that you can get. But generally the rule of thumb, any of your lights and medium pieces, I always suggest well fitted. And if you have any heavy pieces, just go ahead and toss reinforce on them. So we got blood spawn, healthy enchantment. We have one piece trained to glant, shoulders again, blood spawn. This is medium, preferably I have light, but I don't have it. And then we have wretched vitality, healthy, well fitted, wretched vitality, tri set. Ideally, you want a healthy glyph, deadly guards, medium breaches. Ideally, again, you'll want well fitted. And then for our boots, well fitted, you'll probably want a health enchant on this as well. When it comes to our jewelry, we're running deadly. Now, I do have one deadly jewelry infused for the extra stamina recovery. You're desperately going to need it, I promise you guys, because you are going to be jumping into Zergs and you are going to run out of resources so, so fast. So it's very important to have a high recovery just so you can mitigate most of that damage. Now, I do have one robust deadly because I found that I was running into sustain issues because i had such a low stamina pool to you know pull from so when i'm constantly break freeing or roll dodging you know blocking you know casting all my stamina abilities i just felt like i ran out and i couldn't regenerate it quick enough so having a higher stamina pool allowed me to get out of those sticky situations with an extra roll dodge or two so i do have weapon spell damage on this um i you could potentially on a lot of these run healthy i did not have the transmute stones to really do this so the scaling for the ultimate is crazy when you stack maximum health. So I think if you really want to maximize this, you will want to run healthy on everything that you're not running recovery on. For example, this piece is robust. You should probably run healthy and you can either run a recovery glyph on this or weapon spell damage just so it'll increase your healing and your other overall damage other than the bubble. Now, when it comes to our mythic, we're running Malakath's Band of Brutality infused with a stamina recovery glyph. This is going to increase all of your damage done by 16%, but you cannot crit well you can crit but the crits don't do anything now your ultimate on your back bar the gibbering shield or this guy right here this cannot crit okay so sanctum of the abyssal sea this cannot crit so it only makes sense to run malakanth now you could run sea servants coil if you wanted to but the only way that is going to buff the damage is giving you major berserk which is only 10 percent damage and that major courage it gives you is pretty much wasted so ideally i think malakanth is the best in slot mythic for this build so going over the skills there are a lot of flex spots on this build you do not have to run dual wield you can run two-handed as well and have a gap closer this is what i found really works best so Number one, we're running Uncanny Adoration. This is really, really powerful because not only is it kind of trolly because you can cast this on someone's mount and it will charm the mount and the mount will actually run back into you if they're trying to get away, which is freaking hilarious. But this is a really good CC to keep people in your AOE around you, it actually pulls them back in. So we are running Impervious Rune Ward on the front. Notice the tooltip on this. This is literally like a 55k tooltip, which is just crazy, man. It is just crazy. So we're running into this on the front bar because when your ultimate pops, your bubble pops like a zip, you need to be on your front bar getting the extra spell and physical penetration in order to do a lot of damage with your ultimate instead of staying on your back bar with minimum uh, penetration. So this allows us to stay on our front bar longer to keep up the pressure, okay? So this is a flex spot. We're using Quick Cloak for a gap closer. This is also really good this patch because of all the AoE abilities, you know, Siege Engines, 
Arcanus does a lot of AoE, so this is going to give you major, major evasion, reducing all that damage taken by 20%, which is pretty important when you're taking a Zerg. There's a lot of spells that are considered AoE, and it's also going to give you major expedition, allowing you to keep up on the people you're trying to focus down. Now, our spammable is Escalating Rune Blades. I'm, I'll go back to Quick Close, so you can change this out for a race against time if you want to from the Sigic Order skill line or if you wanted to run a two-hander for a gap closer I highly suggest running a critical charge even though you, you're not really worried about crits on this build critical charge does cost less or you can run stampede um, um, that's entirely up to you and the good thing about it is you can change uh, ability on your back we can go down the rabbit hole on this i'm just telling you if you want a gap closer take out quick cloak and run something like a dual world something like that okay and if you really want to be edgy from the dual world skill line you can run hidden blade and you can pretty much be like a pseudo night blade uh, you can just activate hidden blade it's called flying dagger so you can do flying dagger on someone it'll stick in them and it's just like Junker Queen from Overwatch. You can reactivate it and you can actually pull yourself to them. So uh, you can try to use that. I don't see anyone using this. I think it'd be pretty funny to, to see, honestly. All right, so our spam wool is going to be Escalating Rune Blaze. This is just essentially here for filler damage. And this is also going to generate Crux, which we're going to consume with Impervious Rune Ward. And each Crux that we consume is also going to heal us. Now, this is a Syphilis Flail. This is really strong. This is a root. This is going to be really annoying for your opponent. It's going to heal you. It's going to generate a crux. It's going to root and immobilize your opponent. So you can root them and then you can stun them and then you can charm them. Then you can slow them. Then you can gap close them. The whole idea is to keep them in your ultimate. Okay. We do have a Vitalizing Glyphic on the front bar. I know this is really stupid, but in order to get the decrease and effectiveness in your wards you do uh due to your passive uh, intricate rune forms you do have to have one ability slotted on the bar with your ward in order to get this passive which is really really strong so that's why i'm running the ultimate on the front bar there's literally no other reason for that now if you wanted to slot evolving rune mend on your front bar somehow uh, that's entirely up to you maybe put the charm on your back bar and have evolving rune mend on your front bar I mean, it's kind of up to you. And there's also options to run this in an Oaken Soul form. I will have an Oaken Soul build for this as well. It is going to be a very devastating one bar build. I think you can actually pull it off in serial. It may actually be better. I got to do some testing, but I will get back to you guys on that. Hopping over into our back bar. Now, this is our one flex spot here on the back bar is Rune of Displacement. This is actually really strong because whoever you're going to focus after you pop your ultimate, you're going to place this on them. And then everyone around the target that you place this on after a two second delay is going to be pulled into that target just so your Abyssal Shield can hit the maximum amount of people as possible. And another really cool trick about this is if you put this on someone, it will not stun that particular person. But if you put this on someone while they're in roll dodge it will actually stun them anyway i'm not sure why that is but uh yeah it's some sort of bug whatever now we are running recuperative tree ties on the back bar you do not have to run this at all if you don't want to if you want to run two hand like it, this is just our source of a uh, major savagery and you know a major sorcery and this really isn't here for any other reason than that you could possibly free up another slot by running different potions, but I highly suggest you run tri stats on this. You're going to be pulling from your magic and stamina pool all the time. So you're gonna need all the recoveries and all the sustain you're gonna get, trust me. So resol resolving vigor is also how we're going to proc our wretched vitality by applying a minor buff to ourself. A nice healing over time. It also gives us our uh, minor resolve. Crux Weave Armor, again, how we're going to proc the Wretched Vitality on our back bar. Applying a major buff will give you those resistances. Um, instead of running Ruin Displacement, uh, you could potentially run Elemental Susceptibility for the uh, major status effect. So you can keep the uptime on your Wretched Vitality. That's entirely up to you. Uh, Crux Weave Armor is really good because it's going to apply Minor Breach to everyone who attacks you um, every six seconds, which is which is pretty strong. Uh, this is a really good ability to have. I wouldn't suggest taking this off for, you know, tunes or, you know, whatever. Now, back bar is Evolving Rumen. Now, this is going to be an ability we're going to spam to not only generate Crux, but this is going to heal us during our ultimate now, one thing that I will suggest when we go over into the champion points is running one in particular, uh, which is Foresight. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Alternatively, you could run Runic Defense, but the thing about Runic Defense is that you cannot spam this for a heal. It is very important for you to be at 100% health upon your bubble being popped or the duration falling off because you need to stay on the offensive as long as possible. Okay, Runic Defense, just simply, it only applies when you're below 50%, so you can't really spam heal this again yourself to full so that's why i'm always going to go with evolving room in even though it is expensive it just does a lot for the build and it's really really handy we do definitely have the stamina sustain to maintain it so just run it 
Now, Sanctum of the Abyssal Sea, the star of the show. You guys, I've already went over this. This is going to be our big dick ultimate. This is what the entire build revolves around, and this is just going to devastate everyone. I will go ahead and reiterate. This absorbs 60% of all the damage inflicted to you, and then once it pops or the duration ends, you are going to disperse this damage to everyone in an AoE radius once every two seconds up to 10 seconds so tldr you get five ticks of this so it's very very powerful it's actually pretty cheap you could possibly get away not even running vampirism i got this all the way down to 129 ultimate by running potentates and without vampirism so you can actually make this really really cheap if you wanted to but i found that you only have a few seconds of downtime outside of your ultimate anyway so really dedicating for the ultimate cost to be as low as possible really doesn't give you massive dividends on this build um, i've tried a lot of iterations of this and this is just what works best for me uh, this is a palette for you guys to experiment with because the arcanist is just that this is a new territory for the elder scrolls online the amount of build diversity on this class once you break it down is astronomical now i hope all that was clear as mud for you guys i can go into another 30 minute video on this but the youtube algorithm says that you guys only gonna watch like seven minutes of this anyway best case scenario and you're going to skip around another timestamp. so what's the point of making a 45 minute video if you guys are going to watch it anyway we'll keep it nice short and sweet so when it comes to blue cp rank master at arms fighting wars thaumaturge and ironclad um you could potentially, if you are struggling with sustain with this, you could take off Master at Arms. And I, this is a really good CB to have. So if you run Foresight, after you drink a potion, the cost of your magic and stamina healing abilities used within six seconds are reduced by 75%. So when you pop your ultimate on the back bar, and if you pop a potion right after that is what I really suggest that you do, you can spam room in for literally free for six seconds so this is going to allow you to maintain your sustain and keep your health at 100 percent pretty much the entire time during your ultimate allowing you to be on the offensive as much as possible a really underrated cp i highly suggest running it on this build now the red tree is really interesting this is where the build kind of takes off so bastion is going to be our first cp for obvious reason this is going to increase the damage and effectiveness of our shields by 15 percent but what one cp is very underrated is actually shield master so not only is this going to decrease the cost of our impervious room ward but this is also going to decrease the cost of your ultimate by 10 percent which is really really strong the other two cps were running pain's refuge you're desperately going to need it because you're going to be tanking a lot of folks and then the last CP, you can kind of run what you want. If you're running into sustained issues, you can run, since we're running bubbles and everything, you can run Arcane Alacrity for your old dodges. Or if you're really running into stamina sustained issues, you can swap that CP for Survival Instincts. Green Tree, whatever, just have Liquid Efficiency, Warmount Gifted Rider, and Steve's Blessing. Well guys, I tried to keep it nice, short, and sweet. I really hope you enjoy this build. I'm really looking forward to some of the clips you guys send me with this build and a lot of the hate messages you guys are gonna receive. I guarantee Zoss is going to nerf this build, so please use it before you lose it. With all that being said, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. You guys are absolutely amazing. I really appreciate all the support that I've had here on the streams. As of late, I'm getting a pretty decent following on Twitch. So if you guys haven't already, please down in the description of this video, go follow me on Twitch. I do dual stream on both platforms. So yeah, it's just nice. Show your boy some love. Thanks again for watching until the end. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.